1727, a guy named Christian Danoclaus was born in Birmingham, Germany. He was a deputy agent in the British Indian Department, worked with the Mohawks, and was a loyalist during the American Revolution. But why am I talking about a guy who wasn't necessarily that important in the grand scheme of things? There's barely anything about him out there. One picture, which I will be using a lot, and only a few biographies. Well, if you look at my channel's name, you will see that our names are very similar. Not only are they similar, they're identical. With that said, I would like to give you a brief history on the guy that I was named after. Christian Daniel Claus arrived in America in 1749 with a job that involved exporting raw silk and tobacco from America to Germany. However, when he arrived in Philadelphia, he quickly realized that no such job was waiting for him. With no money for a return trip, Claus decided to find work over the winter and return to Germany in the spring. Work came in the form of tutoring for Johann Konrad Weissner's son. Weissner was Philadelphia's Indian agent, a sort of liaison between the government and the Native American tribes. In 1750, Claus joined Weissner to the Hudson Mohawk Valley and stayed with the Onondagas. While there, Claus began to collect the vocabulary of their language. Back in Philadelphia, the governor, recognizing his love for languages, arranged for Claus and Weissner's son to live with the Mohawks. He stayed with King Hendrik, who taught him their language, customs, and history. In 1755, Claus was made lieutenant and a deputy secretary of Indian Affairs. This came with some military duties as well, and during the Seven Years' War, he played a large role as interpreter and diplomat for the negotiations between the British and the Native Americans. After the war, he was made deputy agent to the Canadian Indians in 1760 and he was based in Montreal. Claus was able to live a comfortable life with his government job. He had land near Albany and married Ann Johnson in 1762. His happy life was disturbed when the director of his department, William Johnson, died. The governor of Quebec was not happy with Johnson's replacement and decided to restructure the entire department, which included dismissing Claus from his position. Claus was obviously unhappy with this decision and left for England to appeal his case before the British House of Lords. In the end, he was appointed as superintendent of the Six Nations Indians in 1777. This position led him to accompany the Six Nations in battles during the Revolutionary War. In the end, a defeat in Saratoga ended the Loyalist cause in the upper Hudson Valley, and Claus and his family fled to Canada, abandoning lands, and possessions. After the war, Claus worked on the resettlement of Mohawks at the Bay of Quinte and on the Grand River. He also collaborated with Joseph Brandt on a Mohawk translation of prayers. Christian Daniel Claus died in 1787 while on a mission to England to try and get compensation for the losses that he had during the Revolutionary War. When I was born in 1990, it was still a mystery if Christian Daniel Claus was part of our family tree or not. My father, being an amateur genealogist, wanted there to be at least one Christian Daniel Claus in our family. So he decided that his firstborn son would bear that name. As more research was done over the years, we could conclusively say that this Christian Daniel Claus was not part of our family tree. During the late 19th century, the United States wanted to assimilate Native Americans into mainstream America. One of the main concerns they had was the lack of surnames. The thought is that one of my Mohawk ancestors adopted the Claus surname because that Christian Daniel Claus was a well-known figure in that community. So that's where my name came from. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next week.